Hi everyone, Miss Seddon back with you for another recipe and this week we are making a occasional sweet treat uh, and we're making delicious melting moments that we can share with our loved ones. We need to preheat our oven before we get into it to 180 degrees centigrade or gas mark 4. Please make sure that you are having someone help you if you struggle with lighting the oven. So we know the routine by now, let's get ready for practical or mise en place. Hands, sanitising, hair, apron, hot soapy water. Let's get our equipment out and go through the ingredients now. To begin with for this recipe, you will need 125 grams of plain flour. Now at the time of recording, we are all currently at home, staying safe uh, because of COVID-19. And flour is actually really hard to come by. Um, it, people are buying it, bulk buying it at supermarkets. So if you don't have any, I have a couple of alternatives. Now I bought these at the loose uh, bulk buy um, food shop that's local in Fleet. Um, so you could use something like a coconut flour or an almond flour. Um, I'm actually going to use coconut flour today. There's also added benefits of using uh, these kind of flours um, because there's extra nutrition that you're not necessarily getting from the plain wheat flour um, and they're naturally sweeter as well so you will need potentially less sugar. Um, you could even make your own flour at home. For instance, if you had oats, which are cheap and abundant, if you put them in a food processor um, for, on a high speed for uh, several minutes, um, you'll actually come up with an oat meal, like a flour itself, and you could use that. Next, you will need 100 grams of margarine. We recommend margarine, but you could use butter as long as it's at room temperature um, or slightly microwaved. You will need 50 grams of caster sugar. Now, we have to be really careful about the amount of sugar we are consuming, and because I'm going to be having these myself, I've actually chosen to use half the quantity of caster sugar, and I've actually used two teaspoons of stevia and xylitol sweetener mix. And again, because I'm using the coconut, actually that will be sweeter anyway. You will need a teaspoon of vanilla essence, um, around 50 grams of oats, although it's really just to roll them in, and five glacé cherries. The first thing we're going to do is cream the sugar and margarine together until soft. So this method is called the creaming method. I'm going to pop the margarine there, and my sugar. And I like to use the back of the spoon to really mash it all together. You have to be vigorous and determined with this one because it won't go otherwise. Also note how I'm holding my wooden spoon. I'm holding it down towards the end. I'm holding it almost like I actually hold my knife when we use our chopping skills because it's an extension of my arm. Try and avoid holding it like this because it will put a lot of strain into your wrist um, and you have a lot less control. So an extension of your arm, like so. So you're going to use the back of the spoon and pressing it in. Now I'm tipping my bowl, not just so that you guys can see, but also because it keeps everything in one area. If I hold it flat, I'll end up mixing it all around the bowl and pushing it all up the sides. So try and keep it in one little area. So now that I can see the sugar is mixed in, I'm going to give it more vigorous mix. My arm's thoroughly tired and I, you can see why it's called the creaming method because now it has the consistency of like a thick jersey cream. You'll know when it's the right consistency because you won't be able to hear or feel the granular sandy quality of the sugar on the bottom of the bowl um, between the bowl and the spoon. So when you can stop hearing that, stop feeling that, you'll know that it's all mixed in. 
Next, you want to add in the vanilla extract or vanilla essence. You want one teaspoon. So I'm looking for, on my measuring set, the tsp, not the tbsp, tsp, teaspoon. And we will know when it's the right amount because it's level with the top of the spoon. Make sure it's all up. There we go. And now I'm going to mix it all in. Next, we are going to stir in our flour to form a stiff dough. So all the flour goes in there. And I'm just going to break up any lumps that I can see with my spoon. And I'm going to give it a good stir together. Now with some recipes, we need to sieve the flour. With these biscuits, we don't need to. When we sieve flour, it's because we are trying to aerate it. So for things like a big fluffy cake or fluffy scones, for instance, we want to sieve it. But for little biscuits, we don't need to worry about adding extra air, so we can just mix it all. There we go, and you can just scrape any excess off my spoon with a teaspoon or a spatula. Make sure it's all in there. We don't want to waste anything. From here, we want to roll it into a sausage so that we can work out our biscuit portions. So I'm going to, with clean hands, take it all up. There we go. Make sure you're not leaving anything in the bowl because less food, more washing up. Doesn't sound like a good idea, does it? So I'm just going to roll it outwards. So if you've ever played with Play-Doh, you'll know how to do this. So roll it gently from the centre and then work it the way out. You want a nice even sausage like this, where it's not tapered at the ends. You want it consistent all the way through. Because otherwise the people who have the portions on the end are going to have a very sad little biscuit. There we go. Now the method for today is the creaming method, but the key word for today is consistency. We want to make sure that all our biscuits, all 10, we don't want nine, we don't want 13, we want 10, all 10 biscuits are identical. We want them to have the same even color, um, the same weight, the same mass, um, the same everything. So uh, to begin with, I want to make sure that I'm proportioning this into 10 equal biscuits. If I was just to go along and try and estimate, probably going to end up with one really big one and one really tiny one, something like that. Here's where we can use our maths. A little bit of easy maths is where we like fractions. So the easiest thing for me is I'm going to divide it into half and then 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I'm going to try and portion this out into 5, but I'm not going to go all the way through first. I'm going to estimate it. So. One, two, three, four. Ooh, this one looks a little bit big, but because I didn't press all the way through, I can go back and try again. So if I went one, two, three, four, five, that looks more like it. And then I can press all the way through. And now I know that I have five equal biscuits. We can do that for the other side. So now we're going to roll them in our oats. You can just leave them as they are, but you want to sort of really press them in because the oats don't always like to pick up the first time. There we go, like that. And then when you've got a good number of oats in there, you can roll it in your hand into a little ball, like that. Even give it a second coating if it maybe it needs it. There we go. That's fine. That'll do. Pop it to one side and do that for the rest. Now we need to get them uh, onto a floured baking tray. Um, I wouldn't recommend the use of almond meal or coconut flour for flouring the surface because they have 
a sugar content and they will burn in the oven so I have a lot more washing up to do. I would recommend the use of just regular flour for this. So I'm just going to take a pinch, sprinkle it all over. If you have a flour shaker at home, even better. But if you're just careful you can use your fingertips. You need to make sure you go edge to edge. Any area on your tray that doesn't have flour that the biscuit is touching will stick. So flour like so. Now we can pop them on and I like to stagger them because they will spread out a little bit and if they spread out and touch one another they will stick together. So spread them out if you can nice and evenly. And now we can prepare our cherries. So it should be very, very straightforward, just on a chopping board with our knife, but still remembering our knife technique. So fingers tucked under, thumb on like a magnet, an extension of our arm without our finger over the top. And using our bridge hold, okay? So rather than using all our fingers, just our index and thumb, gonna cut it in half, like so. And then, bring back my tray. You can see how I'm going to take my cherry and I'm going to turn it with the round side facing up. I'm going to pop it on the top and I'm going to push it and nestle it into that little biscuit. If it spreads out just give them a little nudge in but that is just how you want them. It's going to keep its shape um, and that's why it's good to start with them as large round balls. So these little guys are going to go into the oven for 12 to 15 minutes until they, the edges start to go golden brown. You don't want them to be golden brown throughout because they're a fairly pale biscuit um, and they don't need very long um, because actually they will solidify a little bit as they cool down. So 12, no more really than 15 minutes. Well, here they are, they've come out of the oven. Now, they did actually spread out quite a bit more than they usually do, and that will be because of the coconut in this case. Um, you live and you learn, it's worth it. Um, I just use a teaspoon and I've just nudged them all up just so they kept their shape a little bit. Um, I had to actually let mine cool a little bit as well because transferring them to the cooling rack is a bit tricky. But if you're using regular flour, you just want to carefully pop a fish slice underneath and then onto the cooling rack to let them cool off. Well you can see that they turned out really well. They're golden brown on the edges and on the underside but they're not too cooked all the way through um, and once I let it cool a little bit it's now holding its shape. We really do need to keep in mind of course uh, the amount of sugar that we are intaking. The maximum for teenagers and adults is six teaspoons a day, uh, or 24 grams, because each teaspoon is four grams. Um, if we do a little bit of maths, we consider that this recipe calls for 50 grams of sugar. If we divide that into 10, that equals five grams per biscuit. So just over a teaspoon per biscuit. If we were to eat six of these in one sitting, that would be our entire intake gone for the day. So we should really limit ourselves to one, maybe two at most. So I think I've deserved this. I'm gonna have it with a cup of tea and I'll catch you next time.